This is the raw water strainer for the engine coolant system. Uh, it's a Perco. It's pretty old. It's a little corroded. Uh, and when I fire up the engine in a moment, you'll see that there's actually a crack here in the water container that's allowing air into the system. So I'm going to be replacing this. I'm going to replace the old raw water strainer with this one. It's from Seaflow and I got it for 20 bucks on Amazon. To replace the old Perco one would have cost me several hundred dollars and to replace just the water container would have cost me about 75. I'll try this one out and see how well it does. It's pretty inexpensive. This strainer comes with variable inlet and outlet sizes. My engine cooling system is plumbed with 5 8 inch hoses, so I need to cut off the half inch inlets to reach the 5 8 inch ones. This strainer also allows for 3 quarter inch inlets and outlets if you're plumbed for that size. One thing I read online on the reviews before I bought this was that the inlet inside the strainer sits far too high against the cap and restricts the flow. Several people recommended cutting that down to allow more flow. I'll probably cut it down far enough only leaving about an inch from the base. So there you go, it took about a half an hour with a Dremel tool and several different bits to cut and file everything down to the right size. Now the inlet sits just about an inch above the base. Because the whole area around the engine compartment is a work in progress, I'm going to throw the strainer up here on the wall uh, temporarily uh, and of course making sure to put it above the water line. This first screw I put into the wall and tightened it up just snugly enough to hold the, uh, hold the strainer in place. The second screw I'm just putting in at a slight angle here because it's not permanent just to hold it. Currently the way this was plumbed, I just detached the hose from the raw water strainer uh, but I opened the valve, the through hole valve here, just to show that at the top of the hose uh, you can actually see the top of the hose is below the water line because water is coming in right now. This is definitely something I want to fix. I want to bring this hose further up above the water line so water won't come in. And of course, once I close the valve, the water stops coming in. Looking further down on the hose here, I noticed uh, this is 5 8 inch hosing, but it looks like one of the previous owners uh, put it, forced it over a 3 quarter inch fitting, as you can see in the bulge in the hose here. Uh, since I don't have any three-quarter inch hosing on the boat right now, uh, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, basically uh, splice the hose with another hose that I have at the top since it's also 5 ace and I'll leave this on for now. Come back and fix it later. Lucky for me, I happened to buy a few 5 ace inch hose splicers a few days ago. There's one end of it. There you go, I've got the hose spliced, and now I'm going to plumb it up to the strainer on the wall. I've plumbed it up to the inlet now, and I just wanted to point out that I've opened up the through hole valve, 
And as you can see, there's no water coming in since the strainer's uh, much further up above the water line now. I've attached the outlet hose as well, and I'm going to splice this hose back into the hose that leads into the raw water intake pump. I've got everything hooked back up, and I've double checked to make sure that all the hoses are connected uh, properly and in the right order. Uh, and I've got the cap back on the strainer here. One thing I recommend everyone keep aboard their boat is a lot of extra hose just in case, uh, hose fittings, and um, hose clamps as well. It's always good to have a lot of those spares available just in case. Let's fire this engine back up and we'll see if this trainer is going to work out for me. One thing I like about this strainer is that with the clear top, it's very easy to inspect uh, the strainer and, and see what's come in and, and if anything is stopping the flow. Uh, but I wanted to point out that I sucked a little fish into the strainer. Sorry, little guy. One thing you're going to want to make absolutely sure of is that the black gasket around here, that that is seated properly. When I first fired up the engine, I noticed there was air coming in. And uh, when I was looking at the gasket, I could see that it wasn't sealed properly in the groove. In the, in the cap. So uh, just I took the cap off real quick, reseated the gasket, resealed it, and everything worked just fine after that. This was a pretty quick and inexpensive project for Moxie, but one that was absolutely necessary. I think this will work out just fine. I checked the engine exhaust just to make sure I had water coming out. The engine's at idle here. More projects and videos soon on Moxie's Refit. Thank you for watching.